This is Matt from VMP Performance, and on this episode of Project Chucky, we're back in wiring hell. Because of you viewers suggesting that we do this, we're going to go ahead and toss a trans brake relay setup and a two-step onto the vehicle to help combat some of our 60-foot issues that we were having last week when we were at the track. So we're going to show you how to install all these things, how to wire them, how to get them programmed, and get everything set up so we can get better 60-foot times and increase our reaction times on the starting line as well. So we don't have to leave off a foot brake, we can just let go of the button and watch Chucky sail off into the sunset. All right, so we've already removed our top panel here and we've unplugged the top connector to the PCM, which is the uh, transmission harness. Uh, we're gonna hook up the trans brake first, so we have to unwrap that harness and get to two wires. We're looking for shift solenoid B and shift solenoid C because we're gonna end up using the relays to cross those two signals when we need it to happen. So I'm gonna get this unwrapped and we're gonna tap into it. Okay, so there's a couple different trans brake options on the market. Um, we have opted for the two relay method because it's the cheapest. Chucky is budget, so we basically went and bought two 30 amp relays that have to make sure they have all five terminals instead of four, and we're just gonna wire these in and saves us a couple hundred dollars versus buying one of the aftermarket plug and play units. This is also something that anyone can do at home if you've got basically access to the wiring diagram. You're only hooking up two wires coming out of the PCM, and then a power and ground and an activation switch. So it's pretty much anyone can do this, and we'll show you how. There's also no tuning required within reason. Certain torque converters in certain situations you'll need some tuning, but for a mostly stock car, there's no tuning required for this option. So we're using two 30 amp relays in this project. So a brief overview on the 30 amp relays, relay by definition, is you're using a low current side to control a high current side. So the way they work is there is two terminals, 85 and 86. Um, those have a little magnetic coil in them that when they have power produces electricity. So when you have power and ground across 85 and 86, doesn't matter which one is which because they're not polarity sensitive, it activates the electromagnet and it closes the switch internally. So then, because it flips the switch internally and connects pin number 30 to 87, when you release the ground or power from 85 or 86, the coil collapses, the contacts open up, and it re-diverts power back to 87A. So think of it as a railroad track where it goes through and it goes straight from 30 to 87A. Then when you activate the, cir the circuit inside, it jumps over to 87 and sends power down that path. So that's how this is going to work, is we're going to have it hooked up so when we're not pressing the trans brake, it goes straight through the relay, uninterrupted, as if it wasn't there, but then when we do activate the relay, it switches to the other terminal and sends power to the other direction. So that's why we're using these. Okay, so now we can get started with the fun stuff. We're going to start wiring in these two relays. We're going to use the 230 terminals, which is these two, bl these two blue wires right here, and we're going to hook them up to the computer side. It doesn't matter which one is which, just as long as you remember which one it is later on. So we're going to connect one of these to here, one of these to here, like so. I solder everything that is important. If it's a PCM connection, such as this, I will solder it. If it's just a power ground wire or something like that, there's nothing wrong with a good solid butt connector as long as it's done properly. Okay, so this part gets a little complicated, so we're gonna go inside to our on-site electrical expert. He's going to explain exactly how all this works. Thanks, Matt. Hi, I'm Professor K, and I'm going to show you how to do the three easy steps to understanding what they're doing out there. So, let's get started. The first step is you have to understand how a 30 amp relay works to begin with. So, step one here. This is your relay, this crude little box here. You have a 85 and an 86, as I've explained. It does not matter, they're not polarity sensitive. You can make this a negative, you can make this a positive. It doesn't matter, as long as it has a positive and a negative. 
Inside the relay, there is this little electromagnetic coil that activates when it has a power and ground. So, normally the electricity goes straight through the relay uninterrupted. So it just kind of wee all the way home, no problem. Now, if you activate this relay, it makes this little electromagnetic field and it pulls this lever over to here. Now, your electricity goes through here. And that's how your relay works. You use a low current electrical charge to control a high current electrical charge. So, that is how a 30 amp relay works, a double pole, double throw relay. Moving on to step two, you have to understand how the shift solenoids in the transmission work. So we have our transmission and we have our PCM. Inside the transmission, there is shift solenoids. These open and close to control the, fu the fluid flow through the circuits in the valve body. Usually all of your transmissions, they all get one common power source. And then the PCM will ground individual solenoids to turn them on or off. So the PCM might ground this one to turn it on and then it'll turn this one off and it'll turn this one on and so on and so forth and you get your extra gears by turning solenoids on and off. So that's step two of how this works. So how do we put it all together? We move on to step three. All right, so step three is how we put this all together. We have wired in two relays in between shift solenoid B and shift solenoid C. So ordinarily, these are hooked up between terminals 87A of the relay. So the power, or I'm sorry, the ground goes straight through uninterrupted. You drive around, these are not there. The power is just going right through, no problem. But when you hit the button is when the magic happens. So. When we hit the button on the trans brake button over here, you're giving power to these coils. These coils are now flipping to their 87 position over here. So what that does is the power is no longer going straight through. What we're now doing is we are redirecting power through 87 terminal. And what that's gonna do is it's going to send the power which used to go straight through, it's going to send this power over to here and it's going to send this power over to here. So you are crossing where it used to be. Instead of it going straight through where PCM is now controlling B, PCM is controlling C, you are crossing the streams here. So now, shift solenoid B circuit is now jumping over to C. You are crossing B and C. This effectively locks the transmission in two forward gears at the same time, thus binding it up. It is locked, it cannot move. You can stall it as high as the torque converter will let it stall. As soon as you let go of the trans brake button, these coils collapse, the magnetic field collapses, they switch back, the power goes straight through like it used to go, and off you go. It releases the holding gear in the transmission and you launch as hard as you wanted to launch. So that is three easy steps on how to understand what we have done out there. So now I'm gonna give you back to Matt and he's gonna show you what to do. So while our expert was inside explaining everything, I went ahead and wired everything. So now that we're all done under here, I'm gonna wrap this back up and we're gonna go inside the car and I'm going to go ahead and wire the button for the trans brake and get everything finished up inside the car. So now that we're back inside the car, all that we have left is we're gonna take the shifter and the center console back apart and hook up our button.
All right, so we're all finished up here. There's multiple ways that you can run the switch. Uh, Motion Raceworks makes a button that mounts on the steering wheel. You can mount a button up here on the dash. Um, what we chose to do is I chose to do a cord with a handheld button like this. The reason I did this is because with uh, driving it on the street, you can tuck this thing away over in the center console, you can close the lid, and you don't have to worry about accidentally hitting it while you're driving on the street. When you get to the track, you can open this, pull this out, and basically run it through this little channel here, close this, and you can have your trans brake. And you just hold on to it on the starting line, let go to launch. So, but any way you want to run it is up to you. In the meantime, join us next episode while we install and wire the N2MB Watt box to go along with the trans brake harness. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to see future content about Project Chucky and other VMP projects.